Hello everyone. I would like to use a couple videos to talk about the twin kite PLC HMI. Its number is TF1800. When we talk about the back of HMI, a lot of people will confuse. That's because from back of HMI, it has a two different HMI. One is this TF1800 TC PLC HMI. Keep in mind this. In full name is a PLC HMI, that is a standalone and a simple task HMI. And recent years, one famous HMI is named TE2000 Twin Cat HMI. So if we go to TE2000, so we can see this HMI engineering. Keep in mind, its full name doesn't have a PLC. This HMI is this style, is using the web HTML5, this technology. But in most of the projects, especially the machine level HMI, the common used HMI that is this TF1800, because as we know, the back of controller is main style is a controller, is the Windows system inside, Windows 7 or Windows CE. So that Windows already run as a PLC to run the program. And once we connect one display to that controller, and once there's a PC run a HMI system, so PC can run as a HMI and the PLC at the same time and run together. So for standalone machine and for simple task, this PLC HMI TF1800 does enough. And another motivation, I would like to do this series video. And one day when I walk on site, I met one new graduate. So he just graduated this summer. And as we know, this year is a special year because of the COVID-19. As we know, a lot of students, they don't have the chance to study in the campus. A lot of uh, engineering tests and the library, they have to do the remote or do a virtual test. But as we know, from the engineering wheel, a lot of tasks, for example, the programming or test or HMI stuff, we all need a real system or the real equipment to hands on, to operate to practice. So they lost a lot of a practical chance or hands-on chance to do this test. And in another hand, even if they eager to learn something, but as we know, most of the common used system, for example, Allen Branley software or Siemens software or Omron software, their software all need a license. Even if some software provide a trial license, but that trial license only have a 30 days or 14 days. After that 14 days or 30 days expire, so you have to purchase license. You cannot use that software anymore. However, from back off side, even if they have a seven days trial license, but after seven days trial license expire, you can still reactivate that seven days trial license. So basically from learning purpose or test purpose, you can keep going without purchasing the license. Especially for the new graduates, they do not need to purchase the license well, they are learning this software. And in another hand, so when they search in the job, the employers try to find some staff who has a experience. However, for this new graduates, especially for this year, they lost a chance to practice, to gain the experience. So that time I realized maybe the back of system from the PLC wheel or the HMI wheel, they can use this software and they can install this software for free to learn this knowledge, to practice by themselves. Another reason I think for the new graduates, they can start from this HMI practice. Some employers, when they hire the new graduates, most of the cases, they will assign the HMI task for the new graduates. And then they have a chance to gradually learn the PLC programming. So the most of the cases, the HMI task will be the initial task for the new graduates. So that is the one key of my motivation to do this uh, series video. So I will use a couple videos to show how can we use this back of PLC HMI. Especially, I already shared more than 10 videos how to program in the back of PLC. And then when you shift to this series video, programming the HMI. So you can use the previous knowledge, the PLC, and use this HMI to test something, to show the indicators, to use the button, activate the signal, or use the I.O. to show the data or show the string. Maybe it's a good chance for new learner to use the PLC and the HMI together to do the hands-on, to do the practice. All right.
Let's start our main meal. If this is the first time you touch the back off system, so probably you can start here. Search this website backoff.com. Find out the download software Twinker 3 TE. This area. Find out the XAE, and then click in, and then download the latest software Twinker 3 3.1 full setup. The latest version till now that is a 4024.11. So you can download. After you install the Twinker 3 software, it will show two icons like this. So we can start this uh, Twinker 3 software by clicking this XAE. Right click, click run as an administrator. Let's start from the scratch. And then let's click file, click new project. Okay, at here, let's select the location. So I will select this directory and then TwinCat, let's name it TwinCat PLC HMI. Okay, click OK. Okay, after we set up this project, so we will see here that is a PLC. And because this TF1800 that named the PLC HMI, this HMI belongs to the part of this PLC. So that's why the actual HMI project will be under this PLC hierarchy. So firstly, let's set up one PLC project. Right click and click this uh, add a new item. And we can click this standard PLC project. And so we can name it PLC HMI. OK, so from the PLC wheel, all the code will be under this POU here. And the tag, we will declare the tag under this uh, GVL here. And this is uh, the library reference. And this is the PLC. So the HMI will be at here under this hierarchy. We shows here. We shows here. If you never used the, the back of PLC before, probably you can browse some previous videos I did before. So I will list some important link below this video. Okay. And before we start, the HMI. So let's quickly set up some test tag from the PLC side. Let's go to the GVLs, right click, click the global variable list. Uh, so firstly, I will use this default name GVL. So this is the PLC global variable. So let's declare some global variables. Those variable will be the internal variable will not connect the actual input or external output. They are all internal tag for testing purpose. Okay, so we will declare some bool signal and integer signal and the string. For example, bool digital one. So this is the bool. And then let's declare some integer data one integer. Okay, and let's also declare two string. So they are all PLC internal tag. And after this, let's declare another global variable list. And this time I will name it HMI. Start push button. Bool signal. Stop push button. Bool. Start. Toggle button. Bool stop. Toggle button. Also, let's declare some indicators. And after we declare, don't forget, quickly build the solution. So those tags will be declared. OK, next, let's do a very simple logic. For example, this is a, the tag belongs to the HMI. So let's transfer this start push button signal to this global tag, this digital one. Then let's go to the main. The tag will use GVL dot that digital one. This digital one signal will be controlled by that push button. So that push button come from HMI tag. So that is a uh, the bool start push button. Okay, and the all bool tag, and this is the full name. Okay, so like this. This is a very simple logic. We temporarily program this uh, logic here. 
And then let's start the HMI side. And from here, let's right click, click add and click this uh, visualization. And this is the actual screen name. So this visualization, let's rename that screen one. So we can click this, uh, activate this uh, simple libraries. While this screen is setting up, I would like to explain. For back of PLC HMI, the HMI cannot connect the outside PLC. For example, the Siemens HMI can connect Allen Branley and Omron PLC. The back of PLC HMI can be only used to connect the PLC this same hierarchy. We create this one screen. And after we create this screen, we can also find this visualization manager also be created. So keep in mind this, we will use this after. And from this HMI wheel, basically this HMI, it has a two style. One style is we create an individual screen here. And this screen can jump back and forth between each other. Those screen will be only used within this PLC test. That means the screen, once we activate this project, this screen can show up. However, if you are using the actual backup controller and once the controller reboot, so this screen will not be activated. This is one style. And this style basically will be used as a test wheel. For example, after we program some tag or some logic, and you want to use this screen as a temporary test wheel and a temporary data monitor. So you can use this style. And the beauty things of this style since there's no exe execution HMI file, so we do not need to use any license. Its main purpose is testing some tag or testing some data. This is used to facilitate the PLC commissioning. Other style, we do need to generate the exe file. Then we need a TF1800 PLC HMI license. From this visualization manager, we will create one target visualization. So after we create this uh, target visualization, and once we compile this project behind, we will generate one exe file. Once we start this PLC controller, this controller program can call that exe file. Once we call that exe file, the backup controller will start this HMI exe file. Then from this uh, touch screen, we will run the HMI screen. If we are going to use this EXE to run the HMI, then we need a TF1800 PLC HMI license or seven days trial license for test purpose. So I will firstly introduce this uh, screen, this without license style. Okay, we create this uh, screen one. So we can still create a second screen. For example, uh, let's create a second one, the visualization. And this time let's create a screen two. So firstly, let's configure what the size of this screen. And I will assume I'm using one small screen. That small screen, its size is 800 times 600. So once I click the screen, you will see the right side, this property is here. So it will show the size here. And left side, the specified. And after we shift to the specified, we can set the width and the height. So for example, I will set 800 times the height is a 600 because this size is very commonly used size in the industry HMI. Okay, 800 times 600. And I will say the same thing for the second screen. Okay. So this is screen one and the screen two. Now currently we are at the screen one. Here we can see this tab and this page. And to add the component, we can go to the toolbox here. And firstly, let's type in a static task here. So we can use the label. Let me name it, this is screen one. And when we click this component, when we go to the properties, if this is the first time you open this software, probably we will see this style. This property, this column is very narrow. So when you try to white, this window, you cannot make it wider. So the tricky operation will be here. Let's double click this line. Once you double click, it will be wide. Frankly speaking, when the first time I use this software, 
I really confused how I can make this a uh, column wider. Keep in mind, double click this line is screen one. Okay. And then I will copy, go to the screen two, paste here and change to screen two. Okay. So once we shift back and forth, we know which screen we are. All right, let's temporarily park here. In this video, we mainly introduced in the pack of system, we have a two different HMIs. One is the PLC HMI, TF1800. One is the TwinCat HMI, it named TE2000. And we mainly introduced the TF1800, the typical machine level PLC HMI. And in this HMI, it also have a two main styles. One is from PLC commission wheel, we temporarily set up two screens without building the EXE file. And another style, we will generate the EXE file. We will introduce this in the following videos. Also in this video, we introduce how can we set up two screens and how can we size the screen? How can we double click the line to adjust the width of the property? And in next video, we will set up the button, set up the indicators, and set up the test field to show the integer float and the string. See you in next video. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumb up. If you like to watch more videos in my channel, please subscribe and hit the bell. Thank you for watching.